Hello! Welcome back to my channel. Um, today's video is going to be my current makeup favourites. And I, I'm doing current favourites because I figured it's been a while since I've done a, like, a monthly favourites video, so to me this just seemed like the best approach. I have so many things to share with you guys. Because of that I will also be doing a uh, skin care and hair stuff favourites video next week. So yeah, this is going to be a, a two-part sort of deal. But yes, let's get straight into it. So much stuff. Gah. So uh, let's start with primer. I figure that's the logical place to begin. Um, this is one where I only have little sample packets at the moment, but I've fallen so in love with it. I'm just waiting for like the full size to arrive in the post. Um, it's the Etude House Face Blur Primer. Um, it says it's smoothing, pore covering, and toned up. So it's it sort of has a a very um, mild CC cream kind of effect. It, it has a little bit of a tint to it. You can't see the tint when it's on your skin, but it does kind of even out your skin tone just a little bit. Um, so this is a product that I've worn on its own, you know, with nothing else on top, and it was actually worthwhile. Uh, it, it definitely um, smooths and covers pores, um, smooths out skin texture in general, and I found it, it did generally brighten and even out my skin tone, which I, I was very surprised with considering how like minimal the tint is in this product. This is what my little sample packets look like. Um, I'll include a, a picture of the full size so that you can see what the, the actual bottle looks like. And I love that despite being um, a smoothing primer, this doesn't feel silicony. It doesn't have that, that slippery silicon texture to it. It just feels like you're putting a really hydrating moisturizer on and like for someone with very dry skin like myself that's awesome it's so comfortable it doesn't feel like a thick layer it doesn't feel slippery it it just feels like a moisturizer and I love that I did not expect this to work as well as it did given that it just has that moisturizer texture but yeah definitely worth checking out Next up is a BB cream, and this one I was very pleasantly surprised by. I did not expect it to be pale enough for me. It's the Holica Holica Aqua Petite Jelly BB Cream. This is a, a cult favorite in Korea. Um, it has been for many, many, many years. Um, there are so many like review videos on YouTube. Um, yeah, it, it's just a, a beloved product, and I can really, really see why. Um, it, it has a, a satin finish, but it's not drying if you have dry skin. Um, it, it's not exactly hydrating, but it doesn't leave my skin feeling or looking dry. It, it just, it looks like healthy skin when you wear it. It doesn't look like you're wearing makeup at all, unless you build it up, of course, and you can do that. I do, of course, have the paler shade, which is shade number one. Um, and this product does have SPF 20. 20 is not ideal, but I mean, you know, it's still a little more um, sun protection, I guess, you know, in addition to my normal SPF product. So looking at the adorable packaging, this doesn't look like it would be pale enough for me, but when you blend it out, it just kind of blends into your skin beautifully. Yeah. So you can see there, that, that does not look pale enough for me, but when I blend it out, actually works. It just gives me a little bit of color, a little bit of warmth to my complexion, which is lovely. I mean, it, you know, especially in, in the winter, I don't mind that at all. You know, that, that works. Gah. But it still provides, like, light coverage. You know, a, a, enough coverage that this is a product I'm totally comfortable wearing when my skin does not look great. <laughs> You know, um, I'm not talking acne, of course, acne isn't something I get, but I do get a lot of redness and um, dullness, patchy, um, you know, like patchy complexion, I guess, you know, like some areas looking blotchy and it, it yeah, my, my skin is um, temperamental, like the rest of my body, I guess. In, in that sense, I guess that makes sense. But despite being so sheer in its actual coverage, this cancels out that redness and blotchiness really nicely without looking like I'm wearing anything at all. So yeah, if that's the kind of thing that would interest you, I highly recommend this stuff. I do think it would be suitable for all skin types as well. Um, it's a very gentle formulation, so perfect for sensitive skin. And of course that gorgeous satin finish is going to work for any skin type from very dry right through to very oily. So yeah, highly recommend. Next up is another foundation type product. Um, and this is the uh, Dermacol makeup cover foundation, this one here. Um, you may have seen this on YouTube, it's been getting a, a, a bit of uh, interest lately. I had to try it out. I mean, a, a foundation that comes in shades this pale, I, I had to give it a go. 
One thin layer of this product is pretty much high medium coverage and one thin layer will have a very um, natural skin-like finish which I, I absolutely love though it is slightly on the dewy side so it, it just makes you look very radiant and healthy. Two layers um, and you can definitely build it up to full coverage so I, I find this is a, a very versatile foundation product and the shade range is fantastic for people who are very very pale. Um, as far as I'm aware they don't have particularly deep shades which is a continuing problem. Frankly, there is no excuse. Like seriously, if they can do shades, like if any brand can do shades pale enough for me, I'm I'm a I represent a very small part of, you know, the the makeup buying market. Especially in comparison to the massive number of people with very deep skin tones who buy makeup. So, yeah, brands get your act together, seriously. But if you are very, very pale, this is an excellent foundation to try out. On my very dry skin, um, this works beautifully so long as I moisturize my skin very thoroughly beforehand. And of course, I, I pretty much never set my foundations these days. Um, this is definitely one that you don't need to set if you have uh, normal to dry skin. If you have oily skin, um, I think this would work beautifully if you set it with a powder. Um, I've seen some uh, reviews from oily skinned YouTubers who had excellent experience with this in that sense, so yeah. My other favourite way to use this, actually my absolute favourite way to use this, is as an under eye concealer. Um, because it is a very emollient sort of product. So yeah, th this works beautifully under your eyes, especially if you have very very dry under eyes. And the coverage is decent enough that you can use it to conceal. So yeah, this is a, a beautifully versatile product and so affordable. Yes. <laughs> Next up is a palette, and this is the uh, e.l.f. Contour Palette. Um, this is what the inside looks like. A again, this is probably a product that um, you've seen elsewhere on YouTube. Um, that contour shade, as you can tell, is the one that I use the most, and I absolutely love this, this highlighter here as well. It's beautiful for very, very fair skin. Um, it's not a blinding highlight, but you can build it up to be quite um, substantial. As you can probably tell, this has hard pan. Coming up soon, um, I'll be doing a video um, showing, you guys, uh, showing you guys how to fix hard pan very, very easily with materials that pretty much everyone has in their home. Uh, so yeah, keep an eye out for that one. That's... Ah, oh, it saved so many products of mine. Oh my god. Uh, but yeah, th this one, th this is just such a gorgeous palette. Next up is a blush, um, and this is from a brand called Mode. I'm, I'm not sure whether you can get this brand outside of Australia, so I, apologies if, if that's not the case. It's an extremely affordable brand, and to be honest, most of their products that I've tried have not worked for me. But this blush is just gorgeous. It just gives you a really natural flush, um, and I'm wearing it today. It's, it's become my go-to blush. Even if I'm not wearing, you know, a lot of makeup at all, I find this just brings a nice, gentle, natural warmth to my skin. Um, yeah. This is what it looks like in the pan. You can see it's just a very natural, peachy kind of colour. It's just beautiful, and the, the powder is wonderfully smooth, almost creamy. You can see it there swatched on my hand. It's quite sheer. It's, it's one of those very um, foolproof kind of blushes where you really can't go wrong, you know, in, in applying it. It's going to be very difficult to build it up too much. Um, so yeah, highly, highly recommend the Mode blushes. I've, I've swatched quite a few in store and they are all gorgeous. I cannot wait to get more. Good. I also have a highlighting product to share with you guys. Um, I probably mentioned this in a previous favorites video like a long, long time ago, I'm sure. This is sort of a, a rediscovery more than a, like more so than a, a new discovery. It's the L'Oreal Paris uh, True Match Lumi Liquid Glow Illuminator. Um, yeah, long name there. <laughs> Uh, the shade I have is C301 Ice, so that's, you know, the palest one. It's a very um, white-toned highlighting liquid, I guess. The formula on these is just beautiful. Um, you can sheer it out to have a very, a very natural, wet-look kind of glow. Um, there is no, like, glitter yeah in them, so that's a big plus. Um, I don't tend to like glittery highlights. I, I prefer mine to be more on the natural side, and then I can I can build them up to be quite metallic, you know, if I want to. So that's what that one looks like there. You can see it's it's very very bright. It's beautiful on extremely fair skin. 
Um, I feel like this would probably look ashy on deeper skin tones, but they do have other shades. There's one that's um, a gorgeous kind of bronzy gold tone that would look amazing on really deep skin tones or anyone with a tan, I suppose. Um, but yeah, this one for me is just perfect. And again, I love that you can you can sheer it out. You can really customize the glow that you want to get from it. So yeah, I, I love this stuff. And of course it's drugstore. Win. <laughs> Next up I have two uh, color correctors to share with you guys. The first one was actually in my recent um, Priceline haul, you know, after the um, the big Priceline 40% off cosmetics sale. If you haven't seen that video, I will link it in the cards because that was a huge makeup haul. <laughs> I'm both uh, ashamed and proud of how much stuff I got <laughs> in that sale. This is the Astralis Bright Eyes Illuminating Under Eye Concealer. It's, it's just one of those peachy toned concealers in a, a sort of clicker packaging. Um, with the, the brush on it. This stuff is beautiful. It's luxuriously creamy, which is exactly what I was hoping for when I bought it, because of course I have super dry under eyes. So anything that isn't really, really creamy is going to be a problem for me. There we go. Nice big dollop out there. So that's the shade that you get there. I, I feel like it's a shade that would work for um, pretty much, you know, anyone with a, a decent tan through to incredibly fair like me. Um, but yeah, it, it's sort of just peach enough. You know, it's not overpowering on someone as pale as me, but it's not so pale that it won't work for someone with a tan. So yeah, I feel like this is a relatively versatile color correcting product. But yeah, Astralis is fantastic for base products. I mean, let's be real, Astralis is fantastic for any makeup products. And the other one is in the same format of packaging, I just realized. Uh, it's from um, a Korean brand called A Pew. A Pew. A Pew. I love saying that. Um, and it's their Real Ampule Color Corrector in green. Um, they do this in a few different shades. They do a peach one. I think they do a lavender one as well, maybe a yellow. Um, I just got their green one. I haven't tried the other colors yet. But the green one is fantastic. I use it sort of um, around my nose and sometimes across my cheeks where I tend to get a lot of redness and my chin. I get very red chin. Just like big, it's like a Rudolph chin instead of nose. <laughs> but yeah, it's just, you know, they're the same sort of um, dispenser. That's the, the shade of green there. So again, it's it's not overpowering on someone as fair as me, but it's not so pale or so sheer that it won't work on someone with a tan. So yeah, I, I highly recommend this one. And like the Astralis corrector, it's beautifully creamy and emollient, but not not too emollient, you know? It's, it's not gonna like screw with your concealer or anything like that. It's just hydrating enough. I also have um, a pencil eyeliner to recommend to you guys. I think this is more of a gel pencil sort of format. It goes on beautifully smoothly. Um, this is the uh, the only eyeliner I found that I actually prefer significantly um, to the Urban Decay 24-7 uh, eyeliners and their, their Waterline eyeliner. Uh, it's from a brand called 16 Brand, which is Korean, uh, and it's just their 16 pencil liner. This is what the uh, packaging looks like, and if you pop the top off, you actually screw it up from the bottom instead of sharpening it. And if you pop the end off, it's got a little sharpener in the bottom, which I always think is a fantastic idea with these kinds of products. It's just so creamy and smooth and like comfortable to apply. Like it's actually enjoyable to apply, which is such a weird thing with a pencil eyeliner. But then once you apply it, it sets like a brick. Like it's not going anywhere. And for someone with super watery eyes like myself, that's a big deal, because I mean, when your eyes water, it's not just water, it's essentially saline, you know, there's, there's salt in there. So for, for this to withstand my super watery eyes for endless hours, that's impressive. I've never found another eyeliner that does that to the extent that this one does. So yeah, highly, highly, highly recommend this one, especially if you're looking for a very, very, very long wearing product. Uh, and it does come in a, a range of really, really nice different shades. Continuing on the theme of uh, eye products, eye-related products, I guess. Uh, next up is the Shu Emora, um, I think it's just called the S Curler. Um, it's a, a new style, I guess, of eyelash curler. It's designed for people with um, small or 
uh, very rounded eyes that, that don't fit uh, you know, a, a traditional eyelash color, which is me to a T. Um, my eyes are very round and very small, you know, like good compared to most people. So I, I've just never bothered with, with normal, um, you know, eyelash curlers because anytime I tried, they didn't work for me. You know, I, I just ended up with an absolute mess, you know, like eyelashes poking off in different directions and bent in multiple places because I had to kind of move the eyelash curler around my eye. And then it was curling lashes at multiple points because, yeah, but this, this is, oh, it's perfect. It's so good. Good. Yeah, it, it 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 clamps your lashes in there and then and then squeeze and because of the shape you just move it around your eye and it doesn't clamp lashes that you're not trying to. You can avoid lashes that you've already curled because of the edge. Like that there's no that like there's nothing on either sides to get in the way. You can get right close to the roots of your lashes without pinching skin. Oh, it's just perfect. Gah! I, I cannot recommend this thing highly enough. Like, yeah, if, if you have difficulty with traditional eyelash curlers, this is amazing. And I got mine for 24 Aussie dollars from David Jones. Gah! <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's even cheaper on Yes Style. I'm pretty sure Yes Style have it for 18 Aussie dollars at the moment. Um, and it's about $12 to get on eBay, so... Yeah! So, so, so good. Gah! And the second last category in this video is lip products, and I have a, a small but comprehensive selection to share with you guys. First off, I've very much gotten back into the uh, NYX Soft Matte Lip Creams after picking two new ones up um, in that Priceline sale. The shades I've been wearing the most are the two that I got in that sale, because, you know, new things are fun. Uh, those shades are Zurich and Milan. This one's Zurich, this one's Milan. Oh, they're so pretty. And they are true to their packaging as well. Like, those are the shades that they show up as on your lips and on your skin. So, yeah, oh, I, I, I love this formula so much. It's just, it's so thin and lightweight and moussey and comfortable. It doesn't dry down completely, so there is a little bit of transfer. And they do take a long time to dry down. But they don't move around, they don't bleed outside the lip line. They're just beautifully comfortable, and once they set, they wear very well. Like, but then, of course, you can reapply them without having to remove what's left as well. You can just apply another layer on top, and they look fine. They look exactly as they would if you just applied it freshly. So yeah, they, these are—I mean, these are a classic for so many good reasons, and they're so affordable. I've also been really loving um, the NYX lip luster that I got in that price line haul. It's like a glossy liquid lipstick. It, it's it's more, oh, it, how do I explain this? It's more viscous than the Intense Butter Glosses. Um, those are very you know, uh, liquidy and smooth by comparison to this formula. Th this formula is much more like a sort of lip lacquer, I guess. Um, so they, they don't move around, they don't bleed outside the lip lines, you, you don't have to worry about them smearing quite as much. There is a lot of transfer. It's, it's basically halfway between a liquid lipstick and a gloss. Um, yeah, lip lacquer is, I guess, the best way I can think of to describe them. They maintain their glossiness for a very long time as well. Like, we're talking hours, which I was very impressed by. And I have no problem reapplying them. Um, you will need to, you know, this is not a, a, a budge-proof kind of product. It's not long-wearing by any means. But it's so comfortable, and they look so beautiful on the lips. They just look so effortless and and healthy and glossy and vibrant and yeah, the, the color range is fantastic. I'm definitely gonna be picking up more of these. Um, I just kind of started with a, a movie nude because I knew I would wear a movie nude. <laughs> Next up is the product that I'm wearing on my lips at the moment. Um, I got this in a Mecca Beauty Loop box and it's a miniature size of the Stila Stay All Day Liquid Lipstick. I love these liquid lipsticks. I have so many of them, oh my God. But I, I'd never tried this shade before. Um, the shade is Rubino, and to be honest, I'd stayed away from it because oh, I've had so much bad luck with these really, really deep shades. In liquid lipstick format, they tend to be very patchy. This one isn't. It, it's just, oh, it's just perfect. It goes on so evenly and so smooth and beautiful, and oh, I'm just obsessed with it. Anytime I want a dark red now, I go for this. It's just foolproof. And I mean, th this formula is beautiful. They're so comfortable. They don't feel sticky, but they don't feel dry. 
They don't dry out my lips the way most other liquid lipsticks do. They're just so comfortable and they feel creamy on your lips, but they don't move. It's, it's kind of hard to explain really, but yeah, they're, they're absolutely worth every cent. The second last lip product that I want to recommend to you guys is another liquid lipstick. This is a, a brand new formula and it's from Astralis. It's another product from that Priceline haul that I posted. Uh, it's their Astralis Liquid Lips, um, their, their brand new liquid lipstick formula. These are beautiful. Oh my god, they're, they're so uh, thin and lightweight. They're, they're not moussey um, like the soft matte lip creams from NYX. They're, they're just very thin and creamy and comfortable. Uh, they don't dry down completely matte. They're, they're not completely transfer proof. I don't mind that at all. I'd, I'd always rather comfort. And I actually like that these don't look completely matte. They, they look almost sort of halfway between matte and satin, I guess. There's a little bit of something there. I, I can't wait to get more of these. Um, uh, I left them over there, but um, I've also got the blue and black shades because, you know, fun colors. Um, I really want to get one of their reds. They, they just have such a beautiful shade range of these. And I mean, they're $10.49, like for such an outstanding formula and such a beautiful shade range. Ah, oh, I love these so much. Last up for lip products is uh, another product from that haul. It wasn't from Priceline though. Uh, this is from the new Mecca Max range. Uh, it's their lip gloss uh, from the Gloss Boss range in Glitterbug. Um, this is basically a glitter top coat, and oh my god, it, it's just so pretty. It's sort of understated for a glitter top coat, I guess. Um, it's not chunky glitter, it's a very fine kind of glitter, but it doesn't look metallic. It, it just kind of catches the light beautifully. So you see what I mean? It's It's just... Yeah, it's sort of more understated than a lot of glitter top coats that I've seen. It's so... Oh, it's just so pretty! If, if that's your kind of thing, I highly recommend this. It has so much dimension to it. Like, there are like three different, um, I guess, shades of glitter in here. There's sort of that, uh, that peachy tone, a gold, um, that's sort of a champagne gold and a silver. And it just looks beautiful. I, I love this so much. I haven't yet found a lip product that it doesn't go beautifully with. It, it just works with everything. And lastly, I have two fragrance products to show you guys. Um, the first one is wonderfully affordable and it's from The Body Shop. Uh, it's one of their fragrance mists. Um, this was about 20 Aussie dollars, which I mean, for like for this much of a fragrance, that's pretty awesome. It, it's basically just a body spray, but it's so oh, light and fresh and uh, refreshing, you know, like not just like a fresh sort of scent. It makes you feel, I guess, a little more awake and alive. I, I, I love that about this. This particular one is um, Fijian Water Lotus, and it's just, oh, it, it's one of those fragrances that just kind of makes you feel like you've had a breath of fresh air, you know? It's, it's so, yeah, invigorating, that's the word. <laughs> but without being overpowering, you know? It's, it's a very subtle, light kind of scent. I also love that for a body spray, this is really long wearing. Like, I can still, you know, uh, smell this sort of, you know, on my arms if that's where I've sprayed it, um, like maybe four hours afterwards, and, you know, at, at, at a decent, like, level, I guess, as well. Um, so yeah, highly recommend checking these out. They, they have a, a decent range of scents at the moment, I think like four or five. Oh my god, this last product. Oh, I am obsessed with this scent. It's just, it's just gorgeous. I tend to not usually go for very warm scents, but this one just sold me. Um, it's from a brand called Toka, T-O-C-C-A. I have the rollerball and I'm saving up for the full size. The, the full size is like $105 um, for 50 mils. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty standard in terms of perfumes. Um, these are, it, it's sort of a, a boutique perfume kind of range, so I guess that's actually pretty good for, for those kinds of perfumes. Um, this particular one is called Cleopatra. Each one of their perfumes has a woman's name, and the idea is that, like, that perfume has a story, you know, like, attached to that woman, and this is her scent. I love that. That is such a cool idea. It's beautiful. But yeah, this particular scent, Cleopatra, is just gorgeous. It's sort of um, warm and comforting and uh, sort of um, aromatically fragrant, I guess. 
which is not the sort of thing I normally go for. There's no muskiness to it. It's not a it's not a woody scent by any means. It's it's very um, very uh, floral, but not like it it doesn't it doesn't have like heavy rose or jasmine or frangipani or anything like that. I I, I don't like those particular scents on myself. It's just this kind of warm, comforting mixture of, of um, floral fragrances. Again, without any muskiness, without any sort of uh, deeper anchor to the scent. Warm and comforting and uplifting at the same time. So yeah, if, if that's the kind of thing that appeals to you, I definitely recommend checking this out. But I recommend checking out the range of Toka fragrances anyway. They are all beautiful. There's, there's definitely something for everyone in that range. And there are quite a few that I intend to get. I'm going to go through this rollerball so fast. <laughs> like as fast as I went through my last one. On a final note, how gorgeous is that packaging? Oh, it's so pretty. Ugh. So yes, that brings us to the end of my current uh, makeup and I guess fragrance favorites. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe and remember to hit that little uh, bell button um, so that you get notified of my future videos when I upload them. Keep on being your awesome, gorgeous, chronically fabulous selves, and I shall see you guys in my next video next week, um, which will be my skincare and a couple of hair care favorites. Yes. <laughs> see ya.